Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kate and thanks for joining me here at Minimal Traveler um, where I teach you how to travel smarter, not harder. So today's video is my long haul flight hacks and this is a long awaited update video because the last one I did was five years ago. Have a look at this little, little gem. I was still at uni when I did this old video so definitely overdue an update. Um, so without further ado, let's jump into it. So today basically I'm going to be sharing all my tips and tricks to survive a long haul flight and make you feel as comfortable as possible. Um, and there's a few different categories that all of these tips and hacks fall into and they are comfort, nourishment and entertainment. So I guess all of them kind of fall under comfort but like I've separated them out like that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to share with you is basically what I call my in-flight pouch. And then this is going to kind of carry over through most of the tips. So this is the one that I have at the moment. She's quite bulky and I want to get something that's a bit more like small and slim lined and less kind of like sturdy. Um, this is actually a tech pouch, I think, like that's kind of the des what it was designed for. But, you know, it's just a pouch at the end of the day. So, in here I've got several different things. Um, and this is quite good because it opens up quite wide so you can see everything in here. So, the number one thing for comfort for me on a long haul flight or any flight at all is having something warm to put on. Because even if the destination you're going to is hot or the destination you're coming from is hot, on the plane they blast cold air conditioned air through the vents so at some point or, or another you're probably going to be a little bit cold so in my in-flight pouch I always like to have a pair of cozy socks these are just some basic cozy socks you can put whatever socks you like and I would actually just put them over my normal socks if I'm wearing like sneakers on the plane or something so along with that I would also recommend to just bring other cozy cozy clothes or a jacket or a jumper something to put over when you're on the plane because it will just make you feel so much more comfortable cozy relaxed you get my draft next for comfort this isn't actually anything to do with my flight pouch but it is something that is kind of a controversial travel opinion but i would say di ditch ditch the neck pillow like just ditch it it's a waste of space even if you hang it on the outside of your bag it's so annoying like and actually it's not that good for your posture and your like sleep posture mainly basically when you're on a plane you should try and sleep like as straight as possible and if you're on a long haul flight a lot of long haul flights these days the headrest that is like behind your head has like two flaps that fold in and you can just fold those in and then just like rest your head and like go to sleep and also just accept the fact that you're never going to have as comfortable as asleep as you would like so just maintaining proper posture is actually the best thing for your sleep rather than having this neck pillow which either makes you sleep like this like this or just some other uncomfortable way for your neck so ditch the neck pillow do it do it right now donate it give it away neck pillows are great for like sleeping in cars or where that don't have headrests but most planes have headrests so ditch the neck pillow. Um, another comfort hack that I like to use along the lines of like sleep comfort and just generally like sitting for a long time is having some kind of lumbar support which your lumbar if you didn't know is the lower part of your back um, of your spine so basically if a plane gives you a pillow you can usually ask for a spare one if you don't want to use it for your head and put that under your back and it allows you to kind of like slump a little without actually slumping like um, or if you have kind of like a big jacket or coat or if they have a blanket that you're not using just fold that up and then put it under your lumbar spine and honestly I promise you you will just feel a lot less like stiff and you don't feel like you have to sit up super straight the whole time you kind of just can lounge a little bit without <laughs> hurting your back so the next tips are kind of more related to nourishment is what I called it um, so that's both inside and outside so the number one part of that is hydration. Um, so along with planes being very, very cold, they are also very, very dry. So A, make sure drink, you're drinking a lot of water. If you're someone who doesn't, isn't able to drink a lot of water, so you can always bring some hydration sachets, like the ones that they use if you've been ill, or whatever 
kind of works for you but just make sure you're keeping hydrated the whole time because you will start to feel it like you'll go to sleep and your mouth will be so dry when you wake up and you'll be like <gasps> gasping for water and then the other part is hydrating the outside so I don't know about you but my skin gets so dry on airplanes so always make sure to take some kind of moisturizer this is just like the most basic moisturizer ever um, but just having something to moisturize I always take lip balm my lips always get super dry just hydration hydrate everything and then along those lines of hydration and this is kind of a bit of comfort as well is I like to bring a face mask like a sheet mask people think you look a bit ridiculous but they're just kind of a little bit of luxury especially if you're traveling in economy which I imagine that most people are I even if I had the money to spend on first class I probably wouldn't so basically having a nice little face mask like this just helps to elevate your experience and also hydrate your skin at the same time. Another hack for nourishment is basically bringing some kind of healthy snacks or you know anything to make yourself feel a bit more nourished because I actually don't mind plain food and I've had a few nice meals, I've had a few average meals and I've traveled on a lot of long haul flights especially because I'm from New Zealand most of the flights that I used to take were all long haul so I've taken a lot of flights and eaten a lot of airplane food and fortunately Air New Zealand actually does a lot of good airplane food but I mean obviously it's not going to be like making a homemade meal but it's just like having a ready meal like everyone needs to stop complaining about airline food Anyways, if you don't like airline food at all, take more than just snacks, take like a full meal. But if you kind of feel like you just need a little bit of extra nourishment, feel free to take um, like a granola bar or some like nuts and dried fruit. Those are always really good. Just a little bits and bobs to give you a little bit of extra nourishment, especially if you're traveling on like 24 hours or over. Like if you're crossing the other side of the world, like it would take for me to travel from New Zealand to London more than 24 hours then a few extra snacks go a long way some countries are a bit iffy about this but you know most countries are fine the only ones I know that are really restrict with their borders biosecurity laws um, is Australia and New Zealand so as long as you eat them before then and then along those lines you can bring other things like some tea like I don't really drink a lot of tea I've tried and I don't personally enjoy it but if you like a green tea or some kind of herbal tea it will always make you feel a little bit better and then I also have these like um, fake Barocca things basically the cheaper version of Barocca and something like this with some extra vitamins and minerals will always help um, it's kind of like avoiding a hangover right taking a few little extra steps to bring a few things to help you feel a little bit more nourished especially on a very very long haul flight then or flights multiple uh, then you will probably come out feeling less gross and less drained so the last thing along the lines of comfort I know I've kind of jumped back and forth between nourishment and comfort again they're kind of the same but anyways um, is to actually have a bedtime routine and do it on the plane for the best sleep and then also a morning routine that you do on the plane so if you're having a flight where it's going to be overnight and you have to sleep or you don't have to sleep but are you planning to sleep during the flight I would have some kind of nighttime routine where you go to the bathroom maybe it's after you've had the meal on the plane you go to the bathroom maybe you like wash your face or I just like to have some kind of like wet wipes um, they are great for on the plane some kind of wet wipes, wash your face, maybe you moisturize. Um, I also always like to take my toothbrush and toothpaste in my in-flight pouch because, you know, brush your teeth before you go to bed. I also bring some sanitizer, great for before, after meals, etc. before, after the bathroom because obviously everybody's using the bathroom. So even if you wash your hands, you might touch the bathroom door, which then might have germs on it. It's just handy to have some sanitizer. Everyone has it these days, I bet. And then in here, I also have a hairbrush and a little deodorant. Um, I probably wouldn't bother putting deodorant on at night when I'm going to sleep, but I would use this in the morning routine. And then um, a hairbrush. Again, I probably wouldn't bother brushing my hair too much before I go to sleep, but 
uh, I would brush it in the morning or if you're kind of if you have really long hair and it annoys you when you sleep you could you know put it into a nice little braid or something like that to keep it out of your face while you sleep and make it get less messy I don't know I know I just said that was the last thing for the bedtime routine for sleep but I actually forgot the most crucial thing for the best sleep on an airplane is dun 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 the earplugs and an eye mask basically eye mask 100% essential obviously it blocks out the light it just kind of helps you to be in your own zone and then earplugs these sometimes the plane engine is really loud and that's like another flight hack is to choose a seat that's like away from the plane engine but sometimes they're more expensive so I understand if you're on a budget yeah anyways um, earplugs as well and I also travel with my noise cancelling AirPods, but I know not everybody has those, can afford those, etc. So earplugs are crucial, along with the eye mask. Get in the zone. Um, someone once mentioned that during COVID, when they're traveling with like the mask, and then like having this on and the earplugs, it kind of was just like too much. So do what you got to do. All right, so that's basically everything for the comfort and nourishment part, and then the next part is entertainment. So you're going to be sitting down for many, many, many hours and you know we're pretty fortunate that a lot of planes these days will have a small screen where you can watch movies, TV shows, etc. Um, and so that's obviously great but sometimes you kind of want to have your own stuff and I know for me especially sometimes like my eyes get a bit tired or just physically like mentally get too tired to watch something so all I want to do is listen to something I don't want to sit there in silence of course but just having some kind of like music downloaded an audiobook or a podcast downloaded onto my phone is just so nice to have some kind of entertainment without having to focus on too many things because yeah when you're on an airplane obviously like physically you might be cold there's so much noise there's other people around in close proximity and the screen is really small and you're having to concentrate and the pixels aren't that great like it's just probably a bit too much I know for me and myself sometimes so just being able to sit back and relax close my eyes if I want to and listen or just look out the window at the sky and listen to something is perfect so make sure you have something downloaded onto your phone offline Spotify is great for that and Netflix you can download some stuff so if you have like old I don't know shows that you used to watch all the time that you just want to listen to like it sounds kind of weird but you can do that as well and then like I said I like to take my noise cancelling um, airpods because they make it just so much more calming on the plane when you can cancel out the noise of the engine um, but I also like to bring my old school earphones whatever you call these <laughs> I swear no one has these anymore or some people do but basically if your electronic uh, earphones or AirPods or whatever you use, headphones, uh, run out of battery and there's no way to charge them, basically having these just is a lifesaver. But I probably wouldn't use these unless my AirPods ran out of charge. And then of course always make sure you have your charger with you. You'll probably have that in your bag but it's kind of wise to put it in your in-flight pouch because you might be using your phone a lot. Along with having downloaded content, I also just like to have a few games. I mean, I'm not a huge phone game person, but I have a couple of games that you can use offline, which are just handy to pass the time if you're just, you know, maybe it's on the last hour of your flight, you've woken up, you've kind of had your refresh, sorted your life out, and then basically you just have an hour to, or two to kill. You don't want to watch anything. You're a bit fatigued from that. So having a couple of games always just last me through till the end. One last thing I thought I'd mention is having a change of underwear. You don't have to have a full change of clothes okay but just having a change of underwear helps as well. You know you've been on a flight for a very long time just having some wipes, change of underwear, switch them over but I probably wouldn't keep well I might keep them in my in-flight pouch but then obviously the dirty underwear you'd put into your bag but it makes you feel fresher. Alright, so that is everything for this video. Hopefully it wasn't too long-winded, but these things are all 100% necessary, in my opinion, for me to survive a long-haul flight. And hopefully it's given you a few tips and tricks to help you survive your next long-haul flight. 
if you guys haven't already please give the video a thumbs up if you've thought it was helpful and don't forget to subscribe down below i would love to have you here as part of my channel and i will see you guys in the next one bye